reflecting during this most holy week on the liturgy of Maundy Thursday, it seems that there are two main themes. The theme of service and love, and the theme of sacrament. We heard in the Gospel reading about service and love. We heard in the Epistle, in fact in the Old Testament reading about sacrament. I'm a member, as you are probably aware, of the Sodality of Mary, Mother of Priests. Within that we sometimes wear a blue scapula, almost a pinny, over the cassock. It stands out, it makes us look a bit different. Also, it's a sign of service. An apron, a sign that actually we're doing work, it's not just lolling around trying to be important. Of course it also means, as you know, with an apron or something, if you get dirty it's only that that needs washing, so it's quite convenient. But it's that sign of service, of serving others, that it's not all about ourselves, even if we are those up at the front leading the liturgy. <coughs> I remember when I was training for ordination, being asked to read the epistle during the Monday Thursday Mass, one week, one year. And how powerful it was saying those words of our Lord, Take, eat, this is my body, before I'd been ordained. It was breathtaking. It suddenly hit me quite what, something of what I was letting myself in for. And of course, every celebration of the Eucharist, of the Mass, is special. Every Mass is important. But actually, on Monday, Thursday, as we commemorate the Last Supper in this way, it takes on such a more powerful significance as we think about what's going on before and after, journeying from Palm Sunday towards the cross, hearing in the Gospel reading about Judas then being sent out. Judas receiving the Eucharist, Judas betraying Jesus, and we know what's coming next, the betrayal. Judas leading the guards to our Lord. Service and sacrament. <coughs> Traditionally in the Monday Thursday liturgy, of course, we have the foot washing, following on from hearing it in the Gospel. We're not doing it this year, not yet. It's in the order of service because it means we don't need to reprint the order of service again next year if we are able to and a reminder of what we should be doing. But it is such, and again, a powerful element of the service. The priest taking off the chasuble, the outer vestments, kneeling at the feet of parishioners and washing their feet. A real duty of service. Cleaning, as Jesus reminds us, the dirtiest part of the body, especially if you've been wearing sandals. The job not of the priest, not of the hierarchy, not of those who are important, but the job of the slave, the lowest one. Jesus putting himself in quite a different position and telling us to do likewise in our love and service for others. Of course, after this Mass, at the end, we take the sacrament to the altar of repose. We sit there, we kneel there, in silent prayer, follow our Lord's question in the Garden of Gethsemane, whether we can just sit and wait with him, or why have you fallen asleep? Couldn't you just stay awake and pray for a while? Stop dozing off. Come on, this is important. We are reminded of that. Can we stay awake and pray? Difficult for me knowing I can't because I've got to jump in the car and celebrate the Mass of the Last Supper down in Bargoid soon after this. Because I so love that time in prayer before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. It is an important discipline, not just on Monday, Thursday, but throughout the year, which is why we reserve the sacrament in the tabernacle up in the sanctuary. So we can always come here and kneel at the altar rail, kneeling in our Lord's presence. 
Archbishop on a Bishop Rowan Williams, who celebrated the Christmas today, has referred in the past to praying before the Blessed Sacrament as sunbathing, bathing in the presence of the sun. Or as one person once referred to it with the sacrament on the altar, I looks at him, <coughs> he looks at me. I think that's quite a good way to reflect on praying before <coughs> the sacrament. We are gazing upon our Lord, our Lord is gazing upon us, whether in the monstrance or whether in a covered ceremonial. We are there with our Lord. And so I said this whole journey to Sunday is one event, one service in several parts. We leave here today, we wait, we pray. We walk to the cross tomorrow. We stand there with our Lord. We are there as he is laid in the tomb. We go away in our disbelief, possibly, in our sorrow, in our terror. We wait, we pray, we gather again on Holy Saturday for the vigil. The Easter fire is lit. The Paschal candle is blessed and lit and processed into church. We hear the history of our redemption through the Old Testament readings. We celebrate the resurrection, we renew our baptismal promises. Not a question of were you baptised, but are you baptised is something which changes us forever. If you think of baptism by full immersion, People go into the water and out, okay, we pour water normally instead. We go into the water almost dying to sin and rising to new life with Christ. There is that symbolism in baptism and we are reminded of that as we renew our promises, our baptism promises, our confirmation promises on Easter day. And so we journey from here taking breaks in silence, taking breaks to pray, walking with our Lord. And so now, today, we watch and wait and pray and stay awake.